find myself starting my vlogs later and later throughout the day, <laughs> every day. It is 4.54, and actually when I got up today, <clears throat> and I rolled over for the 15th time and hit my alarm, I thought, at 12.30, I thought, it wouldn't be so interesting if I had like a camera crew to follow me around. Like if Peter Mont actually had like a reality show and you guys like saw me get up in the morning and like if you literally saw, like I'm showing you a lot of my life, but if you literally saw like 24 hours a day of it, like that would be so crazy, wouldn't it? I mean, every little thing from getting up to hitting the alarm 15 times. That would be so exciting, wouldn't it? That would be kind of like an ASMR video. I went to the casino last night and I won $500. <laughs> Yay! So that helps out with some bills this month. And uh, let's see what else has happened. And then I went into my office today and I wrote for a while. And then I went to the bank and then I went and got coffee. And I don't know what else I did. I talked to my YouTuber friend, John Wilson. And then um, he's like such a nice guy. If you don't know his channel, go check it out. It's called John Wilson. He and his husband are very similar to Alex and I in that there's like the age difference is almost identical. He's a couple years younger than me. I think he's like, I think he's like 37, 38. Um, but the age difference between he and his husband is almost identical. And they have two dogs. We have three. Um, they're just really nice guys and they live in the UK. So anyway, we were just talking about like the similarities of our relationships and our lives and stuff like that. But anyway, and then it is, I was talking about this yesterday. I think it's Diversathon on booktube so if you don't know what booktube is booktube is a community of people that like to read books and like to all that kind of stuff and so um but diversathon is a week-long thing did i talk about this yesterday i think i did um i haven't uploaded today's vlog vlogging with peter so anyway i haven't uploaded my video from yesterday but anyway um diversathon is a week-long readathon and there's no challenges like typically there's like read seven books in seven days or something like that there's no challenges oh i did do this yesterday because i was talking about how it's original voices but actually it's called own voices and so like if you're gonna read a book like a trans book you would has a main character that's trans you would want to read it by an author who is trans themselves and so the whole idea is to support own authors and so I went to the bookstore today and Adam Silvera's brand new book history is all you left me is out I love Adam Silvera's work so much it's absolutely beautiful here he is just a phenomenal author phenomenal author um, beautiful beautiful but, I mean, his books are like YA, but they're not even YA. They're just beautifully written. So anyway, that's his book that just came out this week. And he wrote More Happy Than Not. I was talking about it on here. And then I bought, you know why? You know what today is on my other channel. So anyway, that's what I've been doing. And now I'm going to the post office. And Alex gets off work in three hours. And um, that's about my life today. Very mellow, mellow yellow. I was telling somebody this yesterday that my friend Leisha, when she went to IU, she became quite the hippie. And I went to go visit her, her house in Bloomington, Indiana. And she had a sign over her toilet. And I was kind of a hippie too, but I was not like this hippie. -ish. She had a sign over her toilet that said, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. I was like, uh, okay. I'll flush it either way. But anyway, they're like, you know, saving water and all that kind of stuff, which I mean, I think that's great, but like, I don't know, that's pushing it for me. It's kind of a gloomy day. I mean, we have had a gloomy after gloomy after gloomy day in Indiana. It is 45 degrees. It's a little cooler today than it was yesterday by about 10 degrees. Still no snow. I mean, it might as well just be like early spring is how it looks. And you know what they say about April? April showers bring May flowers. <laughs> My mom used to do the sound where she would go. And then she would go, creaky Halloween door. <laughs> it's so funny when I go, I do the thing where I go. And people are like, you have the funniest laugh. I'm like, that's not a laugh. Like, that's me. Like, maybe my laugh does sound like that. I don't know. 
it's so funny when you start doing videos because what you realize is like you see parts of yourself that you would like never notice otherwise and um it was funny because I was talking to my friend John and I was like, you know, your husband like loves to be on camera and he was like, yeah, he doesn't mind being on camera at all. And I'm like, my husband will like sabotage shit, right? Like, like he does not, Alex doesn't love being on camera. He just doesn't, right? And um, I think like to some degree, like as much as he's supportive of me doing this and he doesn't mind the vlogs and he agreed to be part of it, it's like, at, I think he also feels like it's a little intrusive. I was watching um, yesterday, so anyway, John was like, yeah, like, you know, his husband Paul doesn't mind being in the videos and stuff, and I was like, that would be so nice, I'd be like, Alex, you want to do a video? I'd be like, yeah, let's go do a video, he's like, not really ever like that, he's like, I guess, we can, but anyway, I was watching um, The Adventures of Zach and B, Zach Garcia, I love that kid so much, his channel is so cool, that kid, but I mean, he's like 24, 25, but he and his fiance, Alistair, just recently got engaged. And they did this video, and it was called, like... You guys should check them out if you don't know him. He's just such a cool kid. The uh, Drunk Couples something. I don't know. Drunk Couples Q&A or something. It was hilarious. And in there, they were asking... Like, one of the questions they got was they asked Alistair if it was hard for him to get used to, like, being on camera and, like, like you know, being on YouTube and stuff. And, like... As social as Alex is, and as, like, in the spotlight as he has been in times of his life, like, Alex is a trained dancer, and he, like, anyway, like, he's been in the spotlight a lot in his life. Like, he doesn't necessarily love this. Like, it's totally different. I don't know how to explain it. And so, like, I'm hoping that will change over time, but I don't know. So, anyway... So when people are like, I love when Alex is in the videos, I'm like, I love when Alex is in the videos too, because sometimes he's like, like tonight, he probably won't want to be in the video, because he'll be like, babe, I worked all day long, the last thing I want to do is come home and have you, like, have a camera on us, and I'm like, I get it, you know, like, I respect that. So anyway, I kind of wish it was, it would rain if it was going to be like this. I'm going to read, my whole night is going to be all reading. I have four books that I'm reading for Diversathon this week, which if I finish them will be, I think, like nine or ten books that I've read for January. So anyway, my goal for 2017 is 100 books. Um, so yeah, I'm on track for that. But anyway, if you want to know what my uh, Diversathon to be read is, what books I'm going to read besides that one, go over to my booktube channel, Peter Likes Books. It's linked below. I could use the love. And um, yeah, you can see what books I'm reading for Diversathon. And if you guys ever want to like participate in booktube, I did a video on my main channel called What is Booktube? And um, I also linked under there some of my favorite booktubers and who I follow and watch. And um, booktube's just awesome. It's just a really positive community of people that love to read and love books. And you don't have to read 10 books a month. You can read excuse me, one book a year and still, you know, participate on booktube. So, yeah. And I'm at the post office. I <laughs> have not been a very good vlogger today. I also got a Diet Fountain Pop, which I swore I wasn't doing because I was just going to drink water starting today. And do you guys want to see where I spent the evening? Oh my God, are you ready? <gasps> Are you so dun 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 <laughs> Let's drive pies. The losingest slots in Indiana. Hoosier Park Casino. Which is funny because I actually last night won five hundred dollars and tonight I Walked out with exactly, well, I was walked out $20 ahead, so, and I played forever. And it was interesting, somebody commented on one of my videos, and they said, does your husband work at night because he's never at home? No, so, Alex's schedule is kind of all over the place because he works for um, one place three days a week, another place contractually because he does contractual work one day a week in another place another day of the week and then Saturdays he works from home um but like on Monday nights he doesn't get Monday nights he doesn't get off until 8 8 30 which usually gets him home at like 9 15 we eat together typically and then like I write in the evenings and he goes to bed about 10 30 
on Monday nights and Sunday nights. And so, yeah, so he goes to bed. Like, we get to bed, and then, like, I, <laughs> I get up, because I'm a total night owl, at, like, 12.15. And, um... I like either write, but like a lot of times, like when I'm like struggling with a book, like I just kind of like drive around and I listen to an audiobook. This is gonna slide, so, but I'm gonna tell you the audiobook I'm listening to right now because it's fantastic. Um, I'm finishing it because I'm gonna read, hold on please. I'll pull it up and show you. The whole time. I'm listening to The Fragile World by Paula Truck DeBorg. It is so fantastic. And she is a new author. I mean, she's not a new author, but she's an author that I found in 2015, 2016. And she wrote a book called The Morning Hours. It was hands down probably one of the top, it was one of the top three books that I read of last year. And this book is seemingly just as good. It is like incredibly written. So the, the details are so intricate. The characters are so well developed. Um, it's, it's absolutely incredible. And they're not suspense novels, but they're very suspenseful. I don't know how to explain it that way. Um, this one is about a girl and her mom and dad, and then she has a brother that's a, like a music prodigy, protege, and like he dies in college in this freak accident. This all happens at the beginning. And then the dad and the daughter go on like this road trip for a reason that I can't say because you should read it. And so the other book, The Morning Hours, is actually about a girl that returns home 20 years after she left, and a woman, I guess. And this crime that happened in her town and nobody knows what happened and her brother's like involved with it. It was fantastic. Because it went back and forth between like the story of this family and the suspense. And I am somebody that's absolutely character driven. Like I could care so I could care less about the plot. If you give me good characters that I can like really get to know, like I love that so much. I'm just like that in life too. Like my friends and my life are like characters. Like I mean, I mean that, like, literally and figuratively. And so, yeah. And then she has another book called The Drowning Girls, and I haven't read it yet. I'm going to read it in a little bit. But I'm doing Diversathon. And so for Diversathon, I am my next audiobook is um, The Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. And I started reading it this summer, listening to it on Audible, and then I stopped listening to it. Um, I did a buddy reads with somebody from Booktubeathon, or Booktube. But anyway, um... And then I'm reading three other books, um, physically reading them. Go to my booktube channel, you can see what I'm reading. Peter likes books, it's listed below. So anyway, yeah, so I've been doing, I'm like, I drive around and I listen to audiobooks. Sometimes I listen to YouTube videos. Um, it was really weird, like earlier, I know he doesn't watch my vlog, so it won't matter. Uh, or any of it, but like Trent from Trent and Luke, the vlogger, followed me on Twitter. I was like, oh my god, like I have watched their videos forever. Like, I love that. Anyway, little star moment. They're such a cool couple. But anyway, um, I had such a fun night tonight. Like, I didn't really feel like listening to my audiobook, and I went through my Shazam and all the songs that I Shazammed, like, just got paid Friday night. Anyway, um, like all the songs that I had Shazam for like the last like three months, like I pay, like I bought on iTunes. Support the musician, right? And um, then I drove up here to Anderson, Indiana, to the casino, and like the women that I usually play with, none of them were there tonight. And there was this woman. She was so sweet. She was probably ten years older than me, and we got to talking and drinking coffee and she was like from Winchester, Indiana, a small town and she's like, yeah, my husband's out of town. He hates coming over here so I thought I'd come. This woman literally hit everything. I mean, she was like $400 ahead and I said, now, are you like one of those? Because like I always like, it's like $4.59. Like at some point, like I just can't stay anymore. Like I need to go home. <laughs> like I can't, I'm not that big of a night owl that I could stay at the casino till like eight or nine o'clock in the morning. And there, listen, there are people that do it all the time. So anyway, I said, are you one of those people that could stay until like, you know, like nine o'clock in the morning. She's like, oh yeah, I probably won't leave until I run out of money. I was like, oh my God. But anyway, we got talking about the casinos and where she goes and plays and it's just casino talk, you know. And then we started talking about bingo because I used to play bingo. <laughs> 
Oh my god. My life. People are like, Peter, you're like the only YouTuber that talks like realistically about playing bingo. Do you guys play bingo? Like, I am seriously, like, if you guys want to know who I am as a YouTuber, this is who I am. I am like your gay best friend, Normal Joe, that has just the same life as you do and watches the same shows that you do and all that kind of stuff that just happens to turn on a camera and talk. And I am like an uber fan of YouTube channels. That's really what I am. That's really my gig. But anyway, so we were talking about bingo. <laughs> she was like, well, I went a couple times with my girlfriend and she was like, I didn't really like casino. I didn't really like bingo as much as I liked the casino. She was like, but um, I, I hit the Christmas thing in 2015. She called it something. And I go, what's that? And she goes, you get to play free bingo for a year. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like, bingo's not expensive anyway. Like, the bingo hall that I go to, the Moose Lodge in Noblesville, Indiana, it's like $26.50. But I, got, I don't go very often. I go like maybe every four months. But anyway, you play for like three hours. The food is fantastic. It's total shit food, right? It's like tenderloins, cheeseburger, chicken fingers, fries. It's okra, fried okra, <laughs> fried. It's like that kind of food, and I love it so much. Big fountain drinks. Um, it's just so much fun. Popcorn, cake, pull tabs. I love that they walk around with those pull tabs. I never played the pull tabs. She was telling me, she's like, I hit $3,000 one eye on a pull tab. I go, those pull tabs scare the shit out of me. If you don't know what pull tabs are, when you go to the bingo halls, they have these pull tabs and they, you just pull them back and you have to get like three of the same like thing, like three oranges, three Santa Clauses or whatever. And um, they're like, I don't know, they're like a dollar each or something like that. People buy the shit out of these things, right? And they walk around in each of the pull tabs. If you are out there and you have ever gone to a bingo hall, you are laughing your ass off right now because you know what I'm talking about. They go to these, okay, so these, these pull tabs are called things like daddy's little girl. And so they walk around and they go like daddy's little girl. Daddy's little girl, daddy's little girl. And they have these little baskets full of these pull tabs and people be like, 50. <laughs> like hand out this $50 bill, it's crazy. But they win all kinds of money on these pull tabs. And so like then, like if you hit these and you get like, you have to have the number on the back of the card. It's like, I don't even know that I really understand it, but it's crazy. But anyway, these people, like they win money on these pull tabs, it's unreal. So that was my night, we got to talk in and where we did go and stuff like that. And somehow we got talking about hot chocolate and we both like hot chocolate and tea and coffee. We talk about the weirdest thing with people at the casinos. And she's like, well, why do you like to come? I said, it's just relaxing. She's like, well, what do you do for a living? I'm a YouTuber. I said, no, I said, I'm a writer and I do corporate life coaching and stuff. And I was trying to explain it to her. And she was like, oh, you're a writer. What do you write? And I was like, and she was like, oh, she didn't really get it. But anyway, it didn't matter. She's like, would I like it? And I'm thinking, sweetie, I just met you like a half an hour ago. How would I know if you would like it or not? But anyway, um, yeah, it was, I had a good time. She was so nice. And it was so funny because she was like winning. Like when I sat down, I hit $180 like within my first 20 minutes, which let me play the rest of the evening and not really lose anything. But she was literally hitting like all the time. Like she was hitting a 60 and then a 20 and then a 20 and then a 60. And then she hit like 225 and then another 60. I mean, she was hitting like crazy, right? And she was so nice because she would say to me and she'd be like, honey, you need to hit something with a triple. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and she got laughing at me. She thought I was a kick. These old women, well, she wasn't old. She was really, I mean, she wasn't old at all. I mean, she probably, you guys would be like, she looks younger than you. She's talking about having two old. She's like, my husband went out of town. He hates coming over here. And I was like, my husband hates coming over here too. He thinks it's a waste of money. She's like, my husband does too. She was like, and this is the other thing that's so funny is that you would think in, in casinos that you would meet like real conservative people. They do not give a shit. They are a small town and they do not care. And they are the nicest people in the entire world. And so we're just sitting there drinking our coffee. She's like, yeah, he, when he comes, he stands behind me and drinks his scotch. And then if I win, he wants me to give him the ticket. And she's like, that's why I hate him. And I said, so how late are you going to stay? She goes, I don't know. He doesn't come home until the end of the week. <laughs> she goes, I might drive back, go home, take a nap, and drive back tomorrow. So I would probably, if I was $500 ahead. It's just relaxing. That's what you're talking about. It's like... And all these people are like, oh, you're an addict in recovery, you're a gambling addict. No, I'm not a gambling addict. I've gone months without gambling. But when I go, I can't stop! <laughs> I've 
never like had that remorse like where I've left and I've been like holy shit I just spent a thousand dollars like I would never like literally it's so funny because these people are like they bring like three five hundred dollars in I bring like sixty eighty you know 120 sometimes but not often like, I never bring what I can't afford to take and it's fun you know so anyway, I guess, sometimes it's kind of like, tonight I got really tired. I'll tell you what's so depressing is when you walk out and you see these people like sleeping in the chairs or the slot machines because their friends are just like not ready to go. If my friend was sitting next to me, and I'm telling you right now, if my good Judy Tanya fell asleep in the chair of the casino next to me, she would be like, uh, we're going, come on. It wouldn't even be like, she, it wouldn't even be a question. If she was asleep, she'd be like, um, it's time to go. <laughs> like this has gone on long enough. Anyway. Tanya never goes to the casino. Every once in a while, she'll be like, well, maybe I'll go to the casino and we'll go up there and each take like a hundred bucks or something like that. And this one night we were playing and like Tanya's not serious about it. And this woman next to us was so serious. And Tanya, so if you watch my vlogs, you know Tanya by now, right? So Tanya, we got laughing so hard. Tanya's sitting there and she's like blowing smoke in this woman's face by accident. And this woman's like, uh, <laughs> and Tanya's like, I'm sorry, there's a non-smoking section. She's like, that's why I come to the casino so I can smoke. Tawny never goes to casinos, the fact that she would say that. So then she was like, I'm sorry, sweetie. She was like, I won't smoke if you don't want me to. And this woman was like real bitter. She wouldn't say anything nice to Tanya. So Tanya like was literally, she was playing like 10 cents a spin on these penny slots. I mean, she wasn't winning anything. And she'd win like two cents and she'd go, oh, Aha, this machine's so hot. This machine's so hot. We got laughing so hard. This woman got so pissed at us. She took her ticket out and walked the other way. She was she had, had it with us. She was like, these two crazies. I'm done with them. Oh my god, we have so much fun. I was thinking earlier today. I was like, I preach all this stuff about, like I said this in my vlog the other day, it's like I preach all this stuff about the life that I want to live and it's like, you know, I, all this stuff I want to do and whatever and then I was kind of like looking around my house and I was like, I read all the time, I'm a writer, you know, like I constantly listening to music, I always have the record player going in my house, although I did just break the needle on it, put the needle on the record, I don't know how to fix the needle on the record player either, so I'm screwed, you know, I just like, I feel like I it, do kind of live the life that I want to have, you know, we travel, we have a good time it's like I enjoy my life like life is about being enjoyed you know and being positive and having fun and all that kind of stuff so yeah life's good life is really good isn't it nice when you can just be content with what you have and you don't need more like I'm not somebody that needs a lot like material, like material things. It's interesting because like, when I grew up, my dad is a surgeon, so I, it wasn't like I grew up wanting things. I mean, my parents both came from very poor backgrounds, but both parents, um, you know, it was interesting growing up because they, I, w I wouldn't say I was spoiled, but I wouldn't say that I wasn't spoiled. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I mean, I like I had a car when I turned 16. My dad paid for my education, which every year on my sobriety birthday, I call my dad and I thank him for paying for treatment and I thank him for paying for my education. Um, both of my parents, my dad is still, I mean, to this day, very humble man. And uh, both of my parents were very, very humble. And I was never the kid that like walked into like a toy store and like got what I wanted. Like it was never like that, you know? But like Christmases were good. I always had food on the table. I always had, you know, new school clothes. I never had anything to want for. And it was interesting because somebody asked me not too long ago, they were like, well actually like a year ago, they said, so you grew off, you know, you grew up like pretty well off. And they're like, but you don't seem like that at all. Like, you know, you can tell that you're educated, which I, it's so interesting to me when people say that to me. They're like, you, you can tell that you're educated. I'm like, really? What is it about me that you can tell that I'm educated? Am I? I graduated high school at the 186. I'm not too educated. But anyway, I mean, I do almost have my doctorate and I have a master's degree, so maybe that speaks of something. I like to think I'm street smart. But anyway, I'm really not. Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so, what was I saying? Oh, somebody said to me, they said, you know, you grew up kind of like having everything that you wanted. 
And then they were like, and you know, like, now you don't financially have that, but I don't financially struggle. Alex and I do just fine. And they were like, is it better to grow up? Like, this is the question they asked me. Is it better, better to grow up rich and then be poor? Or do you think it would be better to be poor and then be rich? And I'm like, well, I've never really been rich and I've never really been poor and I'm grateful for what I have. So, you know, like, it is what it is. And this girl looked at me and she goes, uh, let's be for real. You grew up very wealthy. I was like, no, I really didn't. But... And if I did, like, I never, I don't think parents should ever tell their kids, like, how much money that they have and those kinds of things. I don't think that parents need to know, I don't think kids need to know that. And, uh, so, yeah. But, I don't think it really matters. I think it, what matters is getting to a point where you're happy with what you have and you don't want a lot more. Like, my husband is somebody that likes material things, and there's nothing wrong with that because for him, like, he takes very nice care of his things, and he is, like, he works very hard, and then he'll say, like, I'm working very hard because I want this or whatever. But he loves clothes and all that stuff. I just don't. I mean, I do, too, but the kind of clothes that I like are so different than the type of clothes that he likes. Like, I love vintage thrift stores shopping. Alex could give a rat's ass. He doesn't even like to walk into a thrift store. Sometimes when I take him to the thrift stores, he's like, oh my god, it stinks, stinks in here, and we have to get out of here. My favorite store in the entire world, though, Alex does kind of like, and he won't even admit to it, but he loves it, and it's called Broderpool Vintage, and it's in Broderpool where my office is, and it's a vintage clothing store. And when you walk in, I've gone, I've been going there for, since I was 15 years, 15 years old. And when you walk in, the Stephanie, the owner, she plays the doors, like, at the same live doors CD, always, always. Like, you never walk in there and the doors aren't playing, always, live doors. I love it so much. And she has old vintage concert t-shirts, of which I probably own half the store. And then she has, like, Western, I mean, she has everything, but I always go for the Western shirts and the vintage concert concert t-shirts. So if you have vintage concert t-shirts out there, Bob Dylan, let me tell you who I want. Bob Dylan, Grateful Dead, Van Morrison, Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, Bob Marley. Like real ones though, not like I bought them at Walmart. Um, punk rock bands like the Smiths. Oh my God, if I could find an authentic Smith t-shirt, I think I'd shit my pants. Anyway, I love that stuff so much. I think it's so funny when people say on my vlog, I could just sit and listen to you for hours. Your voice is so relaxing. I think my voice is raspy as shit. I think my voice is it's so funny because like on my other channel, people are always like, your voice is so annoying. I can't stand your voice. And I'm like, well, first of all, why would you ever leave that comment for somebody? I think that's a cruel comment. Like, it's so easy for people in life to be so cruel, don't you think? And just and leave cruelty and do cruel things. It's so much harder to be a nicer person. But the payoff is so much greater. And then once you get into, like, the regimen of being a kinder, nicer person, it's really easy. Like, once you start speaking the, ang the language of compassion, I think it's so easy to be compassionate and be caring and kind on a regular basis. But I think, like, at first, it takes some work. I think some people are just programmed to be, and I, and listen, I used to be really, really negative. There was a year, it's probably like our second or third year into our relationship. I asked Alex what he wanted for Christmas, and he said, I want you to be positive every day of the next year. And I gave him a picture for Christmas of me smiling. If you ever see me vlogging in the bedroom, you can see it. He has it next to his bed, or right next to our bed on his side. And um, I said, okay, for the next year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna smile every day. And I'm gonna be positive because I would always see things as the glass is half empty. And you know, I consciously really had to work hard at like programming myself to be positive and to be caring, not so much caring and kind because I'm very empathetic towards other people, but to be like positive about the outlook on life instead of saying like, oh, I'm not gonna have enough money to do this. Instead, saying, yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out how to have enough money. Like, let's plan this trip. This will be fun. Or oh, it's gonna rain. The rain is gonna be ugly. Instead, looking at it and being like, oh my. God, I love rain. Rain is so beautiful, right? And I think it takes some, you know, effort to get towards positive. And, you know, my mom, as much as I loved her, you know, and she was a very wise woman, was very negative at times. And I think I grew up in an environment of just kind of, like, always seeing the negative of things and not always the positives. Like, she had to work very, very hard at being positive. And, um, it's just a language that we speak. And I think, you know, in changing that... Like, my dad is somebody that, like, was always positive my entire life, and as he gets older, he, he's, he's kind of negative a little bit, and it makes me kind of sad, you know, because my dad has so many great things in his life, and 
My dad is so funny. Like, my dad could go anywhere, travel anywhere, have anything that he wanted to have in the entire world, and he is happiest sitting on his back patio smoking a cigar with his dogs. Like, that is my... He does, like, my dad is so hilarious. Like, there's these, he has a pool, and he lives on a lake, and there's these do there's these ducks, and he calls her Mrs. Ducky. It's the cutest thing. And Mrs. Ducky comes every year. Of course, it's probably not the same duck, obviously, but my dad puts this baby crib down next to the pool, and he's cut half of it out, and he puts all this bedding down next to his pool, okay, like a baby crib. So that Mrs. Ducky can be in the pool, and then he puts a ramp up that she can, like, go down into the pool, and then she makes a nest in the cradle, and, like, he, like, videotapes this, and he, like, takes pictures of Mrs. Ducky every year. I mean, it's the sweetest thing in the entire world. My dad is such a genuinely good guy. He is just, like, literally would give you the shirt off his back. Like, literally. And, um... I wouldn't say he's negative. I would say that he's so cynical and sarcastic. But I will tell you that one thing that I got from my dad is that my dad never complains. Ever. Ever. Never. And my dad is the epitome of suiting up and showing up. Always suits up and shows up. Coolest thing in the world. Coolest guy. Really cool guy. Very laid back. Like, I just saw him at my aunt's funeral and he came in and he had this gorgeous suit on, this like wool suit, very cool tie, my dad is such a, such a sharp dresser, but like in the summer, he's like flip flops, cut off jean shorts, and then like a trucker hat, he has a beard, we look identical, it's hilarious, and then he has on like, except he's like in shape and I'm not. But anyway, I love my dad so much. It's so funny because like on my blog that I used to write and on my videos, people are like, you always talk about your mom, you never talk about your dad. And it's like, I think for on some level, like you take the people closest to you for granted. I don't see my dad a whole lot because he's super, super busy. Um, <clears throat> my dad is 76 years old and he's vice president of a corporation and he still like uh, practices surgery regularly. And um, so he's just super busy, and when he's not working, he likes to just kind of be at home with my stepmom and the dogs, and he reads. My dad reads, like, the weirdest books in the entire world. I'd be like, Dad, what are you reading? He'll be like, well, I'm reading this book about the white elephant of Nigeria, and um, this one elephant in particular, her name was Esther, and I'm like, what? <laughs> he's so funny. I love my dad. He's such a cool dude. Both of my parents were so cool. I was so blessed to have such cool parents that exposed me to, like, the coolest things in the world, you know? But at the same time, like, kept me in check about being kind, not talking down to people, you know? My dad was so big when I was growing up on the way that men talk to women. Like, I feel like we've lost that in society. Like, I feel like boys and men talk so disrespectfully to women today. And, you know, I think we don't talk to our elders respectfully. Respectfully, And if you don't know what the word elders means, look it up. Because that means that you weren't taught that. But, but what it means is somebody older than us. Like, your neighbor or, like, a supervisor or, like, a pastor and, like, when I was growing up, I never called my parents friends by their first name. They were always Mr. and Mrs. Jones or Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you know? Even if they were, like, my parents' closest friends for years and years and years. They're just this, like, we, our society has lost respect. Like, I, what has happened? You know, what has happened to, like, no respect and no kindness? This has gone so weird, hasn't it? I was talking about, like, being at the casino, and now I'm talking about how society has lost respect. Anyway, and I don't, I don't think it's the millennials. I don't. I think it's the parents of the millennials. Excuse me. I think it's us. I think it's my age group. I think we've let those things go. We've become soft. We've become, you know, a, my friends have all sold out and work for companies just so they have good health care benefits and are bitching and moaning because they won't have any social security when they're 70. Get over it. You know, it's like, enjoy your life. You may not make it to 70 anyway. So it's like, I don't know. I feel like, when did we settle? And I. <laughs> Life is sh so short. It's like, I know so many people that are so bitter about their lives. I'm like, my God, enjoy your life. It's so short. And you're not going to lay in your deathbed and be like, oh my God, I wish I had, you know, da-da-da-da-da. All this negative 
fancy stuff. I just don't understand it. it depresses me. I don't allow a lot of that negativity into my life. I just don't. Like, if people are real negative, they find their way out of my life real quick. And I suggest that to you, too. And I also suggest that if you have people that are really negative in your life, you say to them, you give them a warning and say, listen, I'm really worried about you. Like, you're so negative on a regular, don't just distance yourself from them. Because a lot of negative people, nobody ever tells them that that's what's wrong with them. And they never know, like, that they're that negative, right? And so if you really care about somebody to say to them, listen, I love you, but you are so negative that like it zaps my energy. Like I don't even want to be around it. You know, give them the opportunity to change. If they're resistant to that, then I mean, they need to find their way out of your life. But if they're not, maybe they'll ask you for help and say, hey, can you let me know when I'm being negative? Sure, yeah, you know. What movie do you want to go see? You know, like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to go see that movie. I heard that movie sucks. Okay, here's a good example. You're being kind of negative. Maybe you need to be a little bit more open-minded, you know? I don't know. I just, it's, it's hard, you know? But you have to decide with the days left that I have in my life, what do I want the condition of my living to be like? What do I want to put out in the world? What do I want my tribe of people around me to look like? What do I want my environment to look like? Okay? Don't let, I'm like giving this lecture now. Don't let the moments go by. Enjoy your life. Life is so awesome. I think that's a perfect point to end on for today, boys and girls. Tomorrow, I am going to vlog my whole day and I'm going to go places and do things even if I have to make them up so you don't have to just see me sitting in a car. But anyway, I love you guys so much. Make the most of your life because you know, as you know, as you know, we're on borrowed time as it is. Good night.